This video will have a look at some of the financial features of Microsoft Dynamics 365 Business Central. Let's have a look at the chart of accounts to begin. So the chart of accounts is set up using a single account code across the business. Structure it in such a way that your balance sheet and your income statement just appear on the front page. You've got totaling accounts and heading accounts so that you can group things together and you can essentially print this off and you've got a trial balance. From the chart of accounts page, you can personalize the screen as we've seen in other videos. We can drill into the details of any transactions and we can drill into a card. So let's have a look at the purchases card. Whenever you're in a card window, you've got to look for these show more features to be able to see some of the fields that may be hidden. And you can close out these note panes to give you more real estate on the screen. So you can see we've got different categories and subcategorization available. Posts and groups can be defined at a GL account level, meaning that you can define whether or not a, a specific GL account is subject to GST or not. That can be quite handy where it comes to things like bank fees. You can see there's a consolidation section here, and Business Central has got some strong intercompany functionality. Um, allowing you to process transactions between one database and another automatically and then also running consolidation processes for group level reporting. You've got uh, exchange rate functionality as well also within the consolidation. Underlying the chart of accounts we have dimensions. You can have any number of dimensions in the system up to eight of those can be set as shortcut dimensions. So dimensions are how you might break out transactions. So you can see we've got a few different types set up here. So department is, the most, is one of the most common. You might want to split all transactions out, particularly at the P&L level per department. You might have projects that you track. And it might be that you don't necessarily need a whole project accounting module, but you just want to link all of the costs and income within the um, general ledger transactions to specific projects. You might have courses or asset numbers, customer details. You can have as many different dimensions as you like. So we have a look at the underlying values. You can set your values up for departments also in a tree structure with beginning totals and ending totals, allowing for some consolidated reporting or split out. Where you do have multiple dimensions, you can set up dimension combinations. That allows you to say, well, if I've got this specific, so I've got a limited one here between project and department, and if I drill into that, you can see that I've got some areas where for department 100, these particular project codes are blocked and can't be used. At a reporting level, inside the system, you've got the ability to use account schedules. So some of these come shipped with the system, and the idea behind an account schedule is that you can create a report, you define the different rows that you want and different totaling, and you can then also define how the column for the report will look across the page, and you can have different column structures. These are really good for having a look at data inside Business Central and ad hoc reporting. They're not so great for doing reporting out to a wider audience. For that, you would look to use an external reporting tool, be that Excel or moving up into something like Solver BI360. So there's strong functionality within there. Within the columns, this particular one is saying that it's a vehicle. And if I just have a look at the overview of it, uh, related overview, what you can see is I've got my dimension values as columns across the page, and then I've got some totalings of the different pieces of it. So you can cut and dice your data with dimensions and so forth in any way you like. You've got budgets that you can load. So if we just have a look at the GL budgets, 
I've got one set up for CapEx projects. The budget, the budget window, you can be restricting by account filters, over date filters, whether you're budgeting for income statement. You can show what you want to see as lines, what you want to see as columns. You can also send it out into Excel and modify your budget from Excel. That is certainly the easiest way to do it, um, particularly if you're budgeting down to a dimension level. So there isn't a way to um, create your budgets based on formulas or functions or anything like that. It is very much a export and import functionality. The GST functionality is pretty strong. If we have a look at our GST statements, you can set up the GST statements so that you are bringing out all of the different um, types and lines of GST. And we're bringing in here, whether it's in a, a, the base or the GST amount. So this is going to give you the total sales value for your GST return. And this is going to give you the GST on sales. It's going to give you your zero rated sales and then the same for purchases. You can structure this report however you like and then the process to run and calculate, calculate and post the GST is pretty efficient on a month on month basis. There is cash flow functionality. So you can set up a chart of accounts related to your cash flow. And when you do that, you're linking it into what the source type is and, and whether it's a balance or otherwise, you can create totaling and so you can create an entire cash flow section. You can also do to a limited level cash flow forecasts. And when you're working in the cash flow forecasts area, that is where you start to put some rules in place and you've got some payment discounts and so forth and you can then create a cash flow worksheet. Within the cash flow worksheet, you can add additional items in here. You can change uh, cash flow expected dates and so forth. And this data could then be used in reporting uh, to give you a cash flow statement. It is limited. It is about um, more manual functionality. You can't put assumptions and so forth within here. You would be splitting some things out manually. So it's at a limited level. Currencies are pretty um, strong as well. You can have multiple different currencies in here and you can load different exchange rates associated with those currencies so that full motor currency functionality is available. Okay, if we have a look at some general journals. So you've got your different, you can set up different journal batches. In your journal entry screen, you can have this as detailed or as simple as you like with things like I've got my department code sitting in here. So you've got date, you can do journals back to some of the sub ledgers as well. Whatever you have set up here, this field will then be looking up from that particular chart of accounts or customer listing or vendor listing. You can see so you've got balance accounts out to the right. So you can create one line journals with a balancing account number or you can create multi line journals. You can copy and paste into your journal entry screen from Excel, or you can use the edit in Excel features to create a journal template to publish back. There is workflow capabilities, if you wish to use them, that you can set up to create journal batch approvals and a number of other processes within here. So with journal batch approvals, you might have it that if user is Heather, then it's approved by Lionel or things along those lines. So if I just uh, drop into this one, you've got different restrictions and so forth that you can put in there. All transactions in the system end up in the general ledger. And from a transactional inquiry level, we're going from the general ledger entries. So the general ledger entries record everything that has happened in the system. You can see some dates here with a C on the front. These are your closing journal entries when you close out your income statement. Within the list, we can make use of our filters and so forth to create different saved views of information. So we've got ones for vehicle insurance. We can push this data out into Excel as needed. 
we can filter and sort accordingly to find information. If you drill into anything from your chart of accounts, so whatever value we drill into is going to automatically filter to that chart of account code, so you're only seeing things associated with that chart of account code. You can go back and find the entries associated with any transaction. So by clicking on a line and find entries, we can see all of the different transaction details that were associated with it. So something happened in the customer ledger because this came from a posted sales invoice. And we can then drill back to any of those areas. There are also some other quite neat little features like um, deferrals. So you can set up different deferral templates. So for my insurance, I want a deferral of 100% and I want it over 12 periods. So when I apply that deferral, which I could do at the time of entering a purchase invoice or against a journal to clear out an accruals account or anything like that, then it's going to take 100% of that value and split it evenly over 12 periods. You've got different ways of calculating it. You can have a user defined one, equal, straight line, and you can do that how you like. You also have recurring journals that you can set up. Let's look for recurring general journals. Okay, so these can be set up as a template and with your recurring frequency, you can set it up to be a daily, weekly, monthly type journal. That's probably some of the core financial features within there. There's a lot more available, but this is just a little bit of an overview for you.